because I'm seeing things that are causing me distress in my, in my spirit. I had the news on, and a young woman marcher was being interviewed, a protester, if you will. And she was protesting about female equality. Now, you all know that I stand on the Word of God and on Acts 2 where it says in the last days he'll pour out his spirit on all flesh his sons and his daughters will prophesy so I do believe in the equality of men and women I really believe that 100% I believe that uh, just speaking about spiritually now folks this gal went on to say that we all work in the nightclubs and we see how women are treated. Sure. You all know my background <laughs> and I spent before I was saved in a lot of monkey tonks and dives and I, I know how women were treated, okay? I also see in the churches today how women are treated. But honey buckets, if you want to be treated like a lady, then don't be in the honky tonks and dives. Amen. Amen. Get with God's people, and if you're in a church where a pastor is who he's supposed to be, a representative of God and not of the male gender, then you'll be respected and treated with respect. Amen. 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 Any of you ladies got a complaint in here? If you do, take him to Al, okay? He's a complainer. <laughs> okay. But I'll tell you what. He'll tell you the way it is. Be careful. I had trouble this week with a, with a message. I just felt empty. And, and it's, that's, a, that's a terrifying feel, I don't, a feeling. I don't know whether you've ever been there or not, but I just felt empty inside. And I prayed and I asked the Lord to help me. And all I seemed to be dwelling on all week long was the conditions of our country and the turmoil that it's in and the disrespect, the protests, the violence, the unrest and the, the disregard for God and His way. And it was very, very troubling for me. I don't know about you whether it bothers you or not, but it bothers me. And I'm not trying to explain today. And, you're going to hear a lot of scriptures that you've heard before, and uh, you're going to say it's the same old stuff. But there's nothing new under the sun according to the Word of God. But, but I am, I, I want you to know, I'm not just saying this, I'm terribly troubled over the state of affairs in our country. It doesn't matter whether you're Democrat or Republican. It, uh, it's, it's, the things that are going on are shining their light on Satan. Not our God. We got to be careful, folks. I'm telling you, it's very bad. We're living in a very, 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 very dangerous—at least I believe—very dangerous time. And actually, the times are spoken of in God's Word as the days of Noah. Violence was taken over the world, and it's taking over now, friends. Violence. You with me? It. Violence taking over the world. Can you all see it? If you can't see it, take your rose-colored glasses off and you can't help but, but see. Real quick, let's look at Acts. We're going to go to the second chapter of Acts and then we'll go over to 
Thessalonians. Somebody say, we didn't come to church to hear this kind of garbage. Well, sweetheart, you're in the wrong church then. You can go turn Joel Osteen on or some of these other guys and watch them load and unload their jet airplanes. Amen. Right. And tell you something sweet. I can't tell you that. I can't. And, and I'll tell you something else, honey. If you listen to, if you listen to the Word of God, Jesus didn't preach sweet messages. Hmm? That's right. Not when they call them snakes and vipers and hypocrites. <laughs> he told them just the way it was. He told them they must be born again. Is that right? That's true. He said you must love your neighbor. Folks, listen to me. We, we need to get back to the Word of God and what it says and not what we would like for it to say. Acts, the second chapter, in the 17th verse, just going to read one scripture. <clears throat> and it came to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons, your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And I have to stand up before you and be truthful. I'm dreaming dreams. I'm not having visions. I guess that means I'm an old man, Ron. Amen. Oh, look at him. He's going to agree with me on that. <laughs> it shall come to pass in the last days. The last days. Folks, this was approximately 2,000 years ago. Okay, It shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And he's speaking of what had just happened. The Holy Spirit had been poured out. And the Holy Spirit is being poured out on you and I today if we will receive. But many of us won't receive. I'm not talking about the hoot and the holler, the jump and the shout. I'm talking about the peace that passes understanding way down deep inside. I'm talking about the love for one another that can only come if you have that Holy Spirit living. If you don't, your old nature is going to cause you to be angry and, and bitter. Turn over now to 1 Thessalonians. There is a peace. There is a peace that passes all understanding. When you can go through things that the world has trouble understanding, how you can go with them without cussing and ranting and raving and screaming and yelling and jumping and throwing rocks and stones. Look at what they're doing to the Jews. Every day bombs and missiles are being lobbed into Jerusalem. Isn't that a shame? Yeah. Isn't that a shame? And now they're getting to where they're throwing rocks and things here in the United States. Do you know the protests that we're seeing going on in our country now? We only saw in Brazil and Argentina and down in those countries years ago, but it has come into our country. Be careful. Be careful, friends. Don't be dismayed because they're just signs. <clears throat> First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> and we'll start reading in the 13th verse. But God would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep or have passed away, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We're not going to prevent those that are in the grave when Jesus comes back to meet us in the air. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. I'm so thankful today, I'm so thankful today that the love of Jesus Christ is so much stronger than any man, woman, or child in this world. Amen. He's coming back to a world that crucified, spit on him, pulled his beard out, beat him. Amen. Coming back because he loves each one of you in this room. Isn't that something? Amen. Because he loves the whole... He loved Adolf Hitler. He loved all these dictators. But they didn't accept him. But he came back. He came... Or he's coming back. 
for those that has accepted him and accepted, here's what we accept, we accept his love, amen? We accept his love, isn't that right? When you accept the love of Jesus, then all these other things will be added unto you. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be added unto you. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Who are we going to meet in the air, folks? Jesus. Who are you going to meet, Mom and Daddy and brother and sister? No, no. You're going to meet Jesus in the air. Amen? Is that right? That's what the Word said. Now, you can write in there whatever you want to. But I'm going to meet Jesus in the air. What happens after that? I'm not sure. But I know I'm going to meet Jesus in the air. Amen? Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. In your trials, in your troubles, your pain, and your suffering today, comfort comfort one another with the fact we're going to meet Jesus in the air. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. But of the times and the seasons, now here's what I want you to see. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, the times and the seasons of what? Rising to meet Jesus in the air. Is that right? Is that right, brother uh, missionary? Is that what it's saying? We're going to meet Jesus in the air. But we don't know the time nor the seasons, do we, do we Frank? No, we don't no. know when no. exactly. No. But when you see these things begin to come to pass, lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. The things that you're seeing every time you turn that jerkwater television on, the things that you're seeing are signs of the time, honey. And Jesus is getting ready to come back. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, Ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord is coming as a thief in the night. Coming as a thief in the night. Think about that, folks. Think about it. He's coming when you least expect it. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. <coughs> and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. You, brethren, sitting here today, are not in darkness, that Jesus should come back. Because we're looking for him, amen? I'm looking. Are you looking for him? Serious, are you really looking for him? I'm looking for Jesus. <laughs> and the sooner the better, although the word tells me to occupy and endure till he comes. But I'm looking for him. He could come at any moment. That's why I'm beginning to see things in my life that ought not be there. And I'm just, you've got things in your life? Yes, sir, I do. Because if I don't, honey, you better get a hold of my hand because I'm going to be raptured out of here. You understand what I'm saying? Your spirit, man, is absolutely, totally, 100% perfect. But your mind, that's your soul, and your flesh or not. I ache in my hips so I know that my flesh is not perfect. I got high blood pressure. I know that my flesh is not perfect. Some of the rest of you got things in your life. You're not perfect. Your spirit is perfect. And thank God my Savior looks on my spirit man, and not on my flesh man. If he did, woe be it unto me. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all, listen, ye are, now he's not talking to the world here. And so many people say, oh, we're all children of God. No, you're not. No, you're not. Amen? Amen. Amen. But ye, brethren, ye, brethren, ye, brethren, brethren mean the Paul's talking to those that are born again, that have accepted Christ as their Savior. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you're not my brother. Amen? Amen. Huh? Amen. You don't like that, do you? Well, that's the way it is. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. Ye are not of the night nor of the darkness very plain. If you're saved, you're a child of God. You're a child of life. Amen. Amen. You're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. Amen. 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 Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. 
For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. That's kind of outdated, isn't it? There's always somebody getting killed by a drunk driver during the day. Mm -hmm. right. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, for a helmet, the hope of salvation, for God hath not appointed us to wrath. Everybody see that? Can you see those few little words there? God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. God has not appointed us to wrath. Now let me just take a second and say, I'm the one that does not believe we're going to go into any part of the tribulation period. Amen. 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 Because that's when the wrath of God is poured out. Amen. Amen. Well, some people Amen. say we'll go through the first part. Go ahead. I'm going to trust Jesus. Amen. I'm going to trust His Word. For God hath not appointed us. Who is the us? The brethren. The born again. Amen. The heirs of God. The joint heir with Jesus. We are not appointed to the wrath. The tribulation period is a time of Jacob's trouble. It's a time for the Jews. Again. 144,000 now the 12 tribes of Israel are going to be going out and evangelizing, preaching the Word of God. Amen? Amen. I believe they're going to be teaching primarily to the Jews, but again, I think there'll be some Gentiles. God is a sovereign God and a God of love, but it is specifically for the time of the Jews. Amen? Amen. Amen. For God hath not appointed us, us, the born again, to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. The last days, folks, concerning the rapture of the church began when Jesus Christ rose from the grave and the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church. That was the beginning of the last days. Some of you don't agree with that. It was at that time, after Jesus rose from the grave, 40 days later, the Holy Spirit was poured out and we went into a time of grace. Amen? Amen. Time of grace. Amen. I'm thankful for it. We're in that time now. Amen. And folks, I'm telling you today, you better accept the grace of God and His precious Amen. Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Every Amen. generation of Christians since that time <laughs> has believed their generation was the one in which Christ would return. Now, I'm talking about <laughs> generations, those in the generation that believed in Jesus Christ. Mockers, mockers taunted that this has been believed for a long time. I've heard it, haven't you? Haven't you heard it? People say, oh, they've been preaching that for years. Yes. yes, they have. Yes, they have. They're right. They're right. They've been preaching it for a long time. So what? <laughs> so what? You know what the Bible says in Romans 3, 4? Anybody know what it says? Let God be true, but every man a liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. Get your good old timey King James Version of the Bible and believe what it says. Amen? Amen. Amen. And believe it. And don't listen to what some of these Mickey Mouse artists are out there telling you. These people that are saying those things are just another sign of the times. The mockers are just a sign of the time that we're living. I'm going to tell you the truth today. Jesus is coming back, and it could be at any moment. It could be before this service is over. Yet no man knows the day nor the hour. We know the seasons. We know the seasons because we can see the leaves falling. Amen? Amen. What is it when the leaves fall? Is that, is that fall. autumn? Fall. That's fall. I don't know the seasons. <laughs> but I do know the season of getting ready for Jesus to come back. So to encourage us, to encourage us, I believe God left this to keep every generation ready for his soon return. Amen. 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 And that encourages us. It encourages me, I don't know about you, but it encourages me to live fruitful and a holy life. Amen. You say you think you're holy? Well, by the blood of Jesus, yes. 
But then to live that holy life, that's my responsibility. Amen. Amen. I've been made holy because I believe in what Jesus did. His blood has washed my sins away. Amen. Amen. But now I need to bring this body under subjection to that spirit that's been made. Is that that's what Paul said? I bring the body under subjection daily. Who? Who, Paul? Who's the you? Who's the I you're talking about that brings the body? The spirit man that has been born again. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again, Jesus said. Amen. In the third chapter of John. The Apostle John, I love John's writings, don't you? The Apostle John believed that he was living in the last generation. Turn to 1 John, 1 John 2.18. John says, little children, you know, some of us need to grow up, don't we? <laughs> well, the Bible says, lest you become as a little child, you're not enter the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't say to stay there your whole Christian life. Amen, does it? Right. Amen. But he says, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. Is that what your Bible says? Amen. You may have some perversion of the word and it reads some other way. But mine reads, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. John, John was the last apostle alive. Is that right or not, Ed? John was the last apostle alive. And he knew about the, the, the brutal murders of the other apostles. And he believed that he was living in the last days. I believe we're living in the last days. I truly believe. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe we're living in the last days? I believe we're living in the last days. Jesus said that as the and approached it would be like a woman in labor look at mark the 13th chapter nation will rise against nation kingdom against kingdom there shall be earthquakes in diverse places there shall be famines and troubles and these are the beginning of sorrows the closer at least this is what i understand the closer that a woman gets to delivery the more intense her labor pains become is that right you ladies uh, is that the way it is the closer it gets to the delivery of the baby i've never had a baby so mm. i don't know i've been the father to a whole bunch of them. my wife always did the delivery thank you lord for that <laughs> sweet blessing she never she never quite knows when the time of delivery will, will come but the signs, the signs are saying that it's close. Is that right? Amen. So when we look at all these earthquakes and all these wars, my goodness, wars everywhere, and rumors of wars, we know that it's getting closer and closer and closer. Amen. When you look on your television, you see these poor little kids over in, in Africa drinking muddy water mm -hmm. along the side of the road. How much water do we waste here in the great United States of America? Famines. Mm. Jesus said the world's, the world's labor pains would increase as the time draws near. The earth, listen, the earth, Jesus, Jesus said, would experience the intensifying pains called earthquakes. Right? Right. Boy, didn't they just have one overseas? A big tsunami come in after the 7.5 earthquake, I think it was. Yep. And just wiped out. Can't believe it. We don't realize how blessed we are. Of course, at any moment, California could break off and float into the sea. And 
Remember David Terrell? He used to preach out. Maybe so I don't know. Jesus said society would experience intensifying pain called wars and famine. Paul said concerning the rapture in 1 Thessalonians, look it up, 1 Thessalonians 5.3. I like for you to look it up so that you know I'm not making these things up. He said, For when they say peace and safety, then sudden, sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Earthquakes, famines, wars have always existed, but not to the degree that we see today. Amen. Amen. Not to the degree that we're seeing today. I can't. I remember as a kid, we were in uh, Lemon Grove, California. My grandfather had a little service station store combination, and my mother hadn't been out here very long. And there was an earthquake, and it scared the dickens out of her. By then, we were used to those little tremors. It wasn't a very big thing. But now we're seeing humongous earthquakes, aren't we? More and more and more and more all the time. And famines, it's getting worse, folks. It's getting worse. I'm trying to tell you today to be ready. You shouldn't be fearful. You should be ready. Amen. You should be looking up for your redemption Amen. draw at nine. Amen. Amen. Geologists tell us that earthquakes are greater and more intense than at any other time in history. Wow, famines have increased. The word is we are in the midst of what may be called the last day's revival. Now, folks, you know that I don't believe that we are in a revival. Do you? Uh -oh. You're going to go have a revival somewhere. <laughs> but the great last day revival will be when the 144,000 are preaching. Then there's going to be a tremendous revival. The Jews are going to have their eyes open. They're going to say, he was the Messiah. We have these little spurts of revival, and I'm proud of you folks. and pray for you, and I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. But the big revival will be after the church is taken out, friends. Right. Yeah. It's your responsibility and my responsibility now to be telling you people about Jesus and that they don't have much time. Soon and very soon, if you know him, you're going to see the king. For the first time in a thousand years, the majority of Christians are not in North America and Europe, but in the third world countries. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're in the great falling away, honey. People aren't flocking to come to church unless they got something sweet to hear. Right. I, I don't know how many of you have started listening to Daryl Dumas. You ever hear of him? Daryl Dumas down in Midian, Mississippi. I like him. He doesn't beg for money. He preaches the <coughs> word and he relates it to the things that are going on in the world today. Half hour show. 30 on uh, uh, Saturday night and Sunday night. And he said it's amazing how the little churches with, where the preacher gets up and he preaches to 30 people and that's about all that they have. And the guy that's out there preaching everything except Christ, they got 70, 80,000 people in their church. Isn't that a shame? I don't know about you and what Bible you have, but mine says... Jesus says, if I be lifted up, Amen. I'll draw all men to me. If I be lifted up. And sweetheart, let me tell you, when they crucified him and they lifted him up on the cross, he looked down and he saw his mother and John. Where were all the rest of them that he fed? Amen. He didn't have a basket of, of fish and bread at that time, did he? No. Nope. I don't know, but what he wanted to feed him with was the gospel. The good news that he's coming back soon. Amen. The gospel is <laughs> the gospel is spreading like wildfire all over the world. Some is the true gospel, and 
Some is the ear tickling, watered down gospel. Right. Yeah. The gospel is being spread. Understand what I'm saying. But in the last days, they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, telling people, listen to that scripture, in the last days, they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You understand, Frank? The, the, the preachers aren't out seeking them. The church is bringing them in. So if they'll tell them something sweet and gentle, amen. Christians, listen. Christians are growing cold, and this is a shame, in their relationship with Jesus. Why is that? Matthew 24, 12 says, Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Many Christians need to go back and do their first work over. Amen? Amen. They've lost their first love. They love the pleasures of the world. They love the sympathy. They love the attention. They love all <laughs> these things rather than Jesus Christ. Amen. Believe what you will, folks. Revival or falling away. One thing is certain, and you can mark this down. This generation is closer to the return of Christ than any previous generation. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. If you believe that, then it's time that maybe we made some changes. The Apostle John wrote, Little children, it is the last time. It is the last time. Then, I don't know, but I think it's safe to say that we're living in the last seconds of the last minutes of the last hour. Amen. Amen. If we apply this truth to our lives, folks, and we should, I'm very serious. We should, we, listen, we must, we must live like this is the last generation. This is, why I, this is why I felt so empty this week. Oh, I know that I was supposedly on a vacation. I went up to see my new great-granddaughter. And that was a big excitement. And then I come back, amen. Everything we do, folks, everything we do, whether, whether it be in the ministry or our vocation, should be based on the knowledge that Christ could return at any moment. We should be that, that so, uh, how can I say it? We should be that much of a Christian that our heart's desire is to be ready when Jesus comes. Amen. He should find us, I really believe this, He should find us faithfully doing what He told us to do. Amen. Not what we want to do, but what he told us to do. And that means some of the things, some of the things that you think are funny, some of the things that you think feel good or sound good, you need to get rid of them. Larry Lee, I don't know whether you remember Larry Lee or not. He was a preacher at one time. I don't know what happened to him. But he asked Paul Y. Cho, and you know, you've heard me mention Paul Cho, he had the largest church in the history of Christianity. He said, how did you build the largest church in the history of Christianity? And Paul Cho replied, simply, I prayed and I obeyed. I prayed and I obeyed. Yeah, well. A lot of Christians pray, amen? amen. They don't obey. I prayed and I obeyed. Let me give you a little secret, those of you that take medicine in the morning. If you're going to preach, don't take your water pill, okay? <laughs> That's why I'm drinking so much water. I took the water pill this week, hmm. not thinking. And it just drives me now. Yeah. Let me close with one final thought. Let's go to 2 Timothy real quick. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. And I know you've heard it a million times. But we're going to hear it again because I think it's, it's very appropriate for today. 2 Timothy, the third chapter, beginning with the first verse. This know also that in the last days, perilous times, perilous times, perilous times, dangerous times, fierce, loss of strength times, in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covenant, boaster, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Are we seeing it? No? If not, go home and turn your television on. They're still talking about the, the rebellion against Kavanaugh. Okay, well, it's really against Trump. 
without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, hot, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins or uh, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We have so many today that are very studious. They read, they listen, but they're never able to come to the truth. Now, just for a second. Just for a second, soberly, if you will, stop, look at the condition of the world and our ungodly nation. We are, Obama said, and I'm not getting political, I'm just going to tell you what he said, and you can, you can look it up to see if I'm right or not. Obama said, we are no longer a Christian nation. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and I don't know exactly what he meant, but he went on to say we are a nation of Buddhists and Muslims and all these other things. I don't know. To me, they're in a, our Christian nation. Amen? Right. It used to be a Christian nation. And just because we have people moving into the neighborhood does not mean that we have changed. Are you no longer a Christian, Ron, because a Buddhist moved in next door? You understand what I'm saying, friends? Folks, stand up for who you are in Christ and praise and worship and fast and begin to lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets you. In everything, lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In everything you do, when you eat in a restaurant, don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pray over your food. Amen. When you go into the store, let them know that you're a Christian. I'm going to close, but something that's really eating me. And ladies, I don't mean to be offensive. Really, I don't. But how can you possibly pay 20 30 40 $50 for a pair of Levi's that are all wore out? <laughs> I never could understand that. They buy them in the knees. Or when I was a kid, I was ashamed to wear clothes like that. I remember mother would put patches on and it was embarrassing. Now they don't even put patches on. They just wear them and the knees are showing, the thighs are showing. Isn't that a shame? I, maybe somebody can explain it. I, maybe I'm too old fashioned for long good. But I'm not paying that much for a pair of pants that are wore out, are you? Are you now? Good golly, I know I can picture Al coming in with raggedy pants on. How many of you really love Jesus this Amen. morning? Amen. You took communion. Do you really Amen. love him? Amen. Yeah. You see, to love somebody, you have to know them. You can't just know about them. You have to know them. I love Jesus this morning. He's my Savior. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my provider, and he's the lover of my soul. Amen.